Welcome to this lesson 1.4 on composition of mixtures. In the previous lesson, uh, we looked at pure substances and we were able to kind of determine the empirical and molecular formula of pure substances. Now, when we have two or more pure substances, either elements or compounds, uh, when they are combined, they form what we call a mixture. And in mixtures, the composition can vary. So for example, if I have a cup of tea, uh, when I look at it, uh, it is a mixture of the water, of the tea uh, chemicals from the tea leaves. I may have a little bit of sugar inside uh, my cup of tea as well as some milk. Okay, so the composition can vary because I can have quite a bit of sugar uh, or I can have less sugar, I can have more milk, I have less milk, my tea could be stronger or weaker. And so these mixtures, we can analyze them to determine the mass composition of each of the substances in that mixture. So what I can do is I can take that cup of tea, analyze it, and do a little bit of calculations to figure out how much sugar did I put in, how much uh, water is in there, how much milk, and how much of the tea do I have. Okay. Now, in a more chemistry sense, every time we do a chemical reaction, uh, a lot of times we have a mixture, right? In single replacement, in double replacement, in my combustion, uh, in my decompositions, a lot of times in my reaction, I have a mixture of either reactants or a mixture of products. And so we can use something called stoichiometry, which is really just mole ratios, to convert the masses of the products from kind of our analysis to find the amounts of reactants that were in the original mixture. Okay, so let me just kind of rephrase that. Stoichiometry is about using the mole ratio. And this mole ratio, this is from a ba our balanced reaction. Okay, so by using the mole ratios, which is the coefficients in our balanced reaction, what we can do is we can find the mass of either the reactants or the products. And so a lot of times we're given the mass of one of the compounds, let's say A. Okay, so an element or a compound, A. And what we can do from mass of A is we can convert it to moles of A. Uh, and in 1.1, that's where we end it. But what we can do is with the mole ratio, this becomes a next step in our calculation that will allow us to then calculate the moles of compound B or just any other compound. And once we have moles of B, we can then use the molar mass and then convert to mass of B. Okay, so to recap with stoichiometry, if we're given the mass of either a product or reactant, we can use the mole ratio from our balanced equation to then find the mass of any other reactant or any other product. Once we have that, then we can figure out the mass percentage of that substance in a mixture uh, by dividing the mass of substance by the total mass of mixture. Okay, so this here is quite a little bit of calculations, and this will make more sense as we take a look at practice one and practice two, or example one and example two. Okay, but the key point here is with stoichiometry, the mole ratios, we can take the mass of one compound or element and we can convert that to the mass of any other reactant or product in that chemical equation. Okay, uh, uh, Elemental analysis, uh, so this is a technique to determine the composition of a mixture. Okay, And so this is uh, something that we use a lot in analytical chemistry. And there's a few examples of methods or different techniques that we can use to figure out kind of what is the, the composition of mixtures. Okay, so an example of elemental analysis include this here. We have CHNX. Okay, so the C for the carbon, H for the hydrogen, N for the nitrogen. Okay, and so this is often used by organic chemists to try to identify uh, the mass fractions of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and other atoms such as halogens and sulfur. Okay, uh, One form of this is combustion analysis. Uh, in this case, all the carbon in the sample is converted to carbon dioxide. All of the hydrogen is converted to water. All the nitrogen is converted to nitrogen monoxide or nitrogen dioxide. And then sulfur uh, is converted into sulfur dioxide. Okay, and from there on, then you can go and figure out uh, how much carbon do I have, how much hydrogen, how much nitrogen, and how much sulfur, for example, do I have. 
Uh, other forms of elemental analysis include spectroscopy. Uh, there's optical spectroscopy. This is using light that is passed through a colored solution uh, and the amount of light absorbed or transmitted to determine the concentration of a solution. Okay, and so optical spectroscopy, oftentimes the instrument accompanying optical spectroscopy is a spectro. Oops. Photometer. Okay, so spectrophotometer uh, analyzes the absorbance of different wavelengths of light for, by the substance. Uh, and a lot of times we also use a colorimeter. And a colorimeter measures the absorbance at specific wavelengths. A mass spectroscopy, so this was talked about in 1.2. Okay, the charge to mass ratio is measured by atomizing, then ionizing a sample, right? We turn all the samples into ions. We accelerate it through a magnetic electromagnetic field. And depending on the deflection of the trajectory, uh, we can figure out the mass of uh, the sample or the elements. Okay. Uh, and so this is that second one. And the third one is photoelectron spectroscopy. Uh, this is something that we'll talk about uh, later on in the unit. The energy to remove electrons from the atoms is measured and can be translated into the electron configuration of an element. Okay, so in this case, you're bombarding kind of a piece of sample with uh, light energy and you're seeing kind of how much energy is required to remove electrons. Okay, so once again, to just recap some of the lesson here, uh, we're looking at composition of mixtures. We're looking at a mixture of different reactants and products. And we're going to be using stoichiometry, which is really just mole ratios, to try to kind of convert from the mass of one element or compound to any other reactant or product. Uh, and in real life, there are a few kind of techniques that scientists do to try to figure this out instead of calculating. Uh, CHNX, used by organic chemistry, optical mass and photoelectric spectroscopy for uh, analyzing different compounds used in different ways. So let's take a look at an example here. So I have an aluminum metal that reacts with the air and forms a thin corrosion resistance coating of aluminum oxide, so Al2O3, according to the following unbalanced equation. So I have aluminum, so I can draw a little diagram here to try to explain what's going on. So I have aluminum, a piece of aluminum. Uh, I have oxygen in the air. This is going to react with my piece of aluminum. And what's going to happen is kind of on my piece of aluminum, I'm going to have kind of these, these patches here. And these patches here, this is the aluminum oxide. Okay, so I have a piece of aluminum reacting with oxygen gas, and it's going to form aluminum oxide. So a 120.32 gram sample of aluminum is allowed to partially oxidize. Okay, so oxidize means can react with oxygen. The final mass is 120.91 grams. What is the mass percentage of the aluminum oxide? Meaning if I look at my final diagram or picture here, how much aluminum oxide are there compared to the rest of all that unreacted aluminum. So if the final mass is 120.91, what percentage of that is the aluminum oxide? So that's what we're trying to find. First thing we're always going to do is balance the equation. Okay, so I need a three, a two here, and a four. Okay, so double check. Four aluminums on the left side, four aluminums on the right side, the product side. I have six oxygens on the reactant side, six oxygen on the product side, so I know I'm fine. Okay, um, B, what mass of oxygen was in the sample? Okay, so let's try to figure out what is the mass of oxygen gas. Okay, so if the final mass is 120.91 grams, and initially this is 120.32, well, this difference here, this difference of 0 0.59 grams, this must have been the oxygen that was added to the aluminum. Right in the beginning of 120.32, if I ended up with 120.91, that's because I added in 0 0.59 grams of the oxygen gas. Okay, and so now that I have the mass of one thing, 
Okay, I can use stoichiometry to then figure out the mass of any other thing. Okay, so going back to my diagram here, I now have the mass of A, in this case, this is the oxygen gas. Okay, and by calculating using stoichiometry, I can then find the mass of B. Okay, I can use this to find the mass of aluminum. I can use this to find the mass of aluminum oxide. Okay, so once you figure out one thing, you can use that to calculate any other thing. So the mass of aluminum, what is the mass of aluminum oxide in the mixture? Okay, so I'm going to try to find what is the mass of Al2O3. Okay, so I have my starting value, which is the 0 0.59 grams of oxygen gas. Okay, so step one, I'm going to multiply this by the mole ratio. Sorry, not the mole ratio, the molar mass. Okay. Uh, that gives me moles of oxygen okay and i'm going to use the new calculation here which is i'm going to multiply by the mole ratio now if i look at my balanced equation for every two mole of aluminum oxide i am using up three mole of oxygen gas okay so this came from here Okay, so when I do that, my moles of oxygen gets cancelled out. I'm now in moles of aluminum oxide, and I'm going to convert this to mass by multiplying by the molar mass of aluminum oxide. So for every mole of aluminum oxide, this is going to be 101.96 grams. Okay, moles of aluminum oxide cancel out. I'm left with 1.3 grams of aluminum oxide. Okay, so that means in my final product here, okay, I only have 1.3 grams of aluminum oxide. The rest is just my unreacted aluminum. So therefore, the mass percentage of aluminum oxide, this is going to be the 1.3 grams divided by the total mass of that final product, which is 120.91 grams. Multiply this by 100%. And this is going to be 1.1%. Okay, let's take a look at another example here, example number two. So the main component of eggshells is the compound calcium carbonate, CaCO3. If you react eggshells with acetic acid, HCH3COO, so from vinegar, uh, the following reaction will take place. So I have calcium carbonate reacting with acetic acid, I form water, I form carbon dioxide, gas, and I form an ionic compound, calcium acetate. Okay, so if 4.421 grams of carbon dioxide, so this here, was produced from 10.57 grams of eggshells, what percentage of the mass of the eggshell was the calcium carbonate? Okay, so if I have kind of my eggshell here, uh, I have calcium carbonate plus other compounds so other compounds but it's only the calcium carbonate that will be reacting with this vinegar with this acetic acid okay so if i can try to figure out what is the mass of calcium carbonate is reacted then i can figure out what's the percentage of calcium carbonate in the eggshell okay so this 4.41 grams okay this is kind of the the gas that uh, is produced the carbon dioxide okay so so here i have the mass of one compound so this is my mass of a carbon dioxide and i can use that to then figure out the mass of calcium carbonate reacted okay so i can also use this to figure out how much acetic acid i use i can use this to calculate how much water is produced i can use the same 4.421 grams to figure out how much calcium acetate i produced okay so once you know one the mass of one compound you can use that in stoichiometry to figure out everything else okay so let's go ahead and let's try to figure that out so the mass of calcium carbonate Okay, so my starting value is 4.421 grams of carbon dioxide. Okay, so this is mass of A. I'm going to convert this to moles. So one mole of CO2. The molar mass here is 44.01 grams of CO2. Okay, so when I do this, my grams cancel out. I have moles of carbon dioxide. I'm going to use the mole ratio. So since I want calcium carbonate, that means one mole 
of calcium carbonate produces one mole of CO2. Okay, so that's from the coefficients in front of my balancing reaction, which is one to one. Uh, now, when I so when I do that, moles of carbon dioxide is canceled out. I have moles of calcium carbonate, and the next thing that I want to do is then convert this to grams of calcium carbonate. Okay, so moles cancel out, and I'm left with 10.05 grams of calcium carbonate. Okay, which means that in my 10.57 grams of my eggshell, okay, only 10.05 grams of it is the carbon uh, calcium carbonate. So therefore, to figure out the mass percent of calcium carbonate, I take the mass of calcium carbonate, and I'm going to divide that by the total mass of my eggshell, which is 10.57 grams, multiplied by 100%. And that means in my eggshell, 95.12% of it is calcium carbonate, percentage by mass. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Uh, please take a look at the following practice questions. They use the same kind of uh, calculations with stoichiometry. Please try to fun sheets. Please let me know if you have any questions and feel free to email me if there are any errors. I will see you all next time.